But you know, um, I was just thinking, with you being a female artist, mm -hmm. um, this whole thing with Cardi B and Nicki Minaj going mm -hmm. on, yeah, I guess they both can't be great. Somebody has to be greater than the other. Yeah. With you being a female, what, what's your take on that? On, on that whole, I don't know if it's a B. To me, yeah, because I think Nicki been throwing shade, so. What, what's yeah, your take? I think that, you know, I haven't like really studied into it, but I do know that it's not even just with Nicki and Cardi. You've seen it with uh, Beyonce and Rihanna, with Beyonce and you know Carrie Hilson. With female artists, people always feel like there has to be like this top beat, like you know. And people have always pitted them against each other in the early. I mean, in the beginning, before you know Nicki made any comments or anything that can mis be misconstrued, people were saying, you know, if you read a status. Cardi B can literally just post a picture and somebody will jump on there and say, Cardi B's better than Nicki. And you'll see like a hundred comments like that. And so people feel like there has to always be a rivalry and it doesn't because everybody has a genre and a fan base. They have a very specific demographic. I think Cardi's is very specific. Do you think that's just black culture period? That somebody I, has to be one, somebody I has to be the king, somebody has to be top dog, somebody has to be the don, you know what I'm saying? I agree, I think it is. I think it's a crabs in the bucket type of thing. You know, um, we still have mental chains. We still think that right. uh, we have to tear somebody else down to get out. At one time, that was true. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of like ingrained in some people. Some people react on that notion without even understanding that that's what they're doing or the origin of it. But like at one time, that was that was something we had to do. You know, just like before this natural hair endemic went out, we like black women were perming their hair and people say we well, all don't have to perm your hair well at one time we did or we, you know we, we couldn't get the jobs we wanted without perming our hair right so in our minds now we still have to have that long straight hair to be accepted even though things have changed but we still feel that way i'm not even gonna lie like still even after i graduated when i went to an interview i wear my hair straight or slick back to the interview and as soon as i got the job i brought the fro back out because yeah, it is. because you know i don't want to take any chances yeah, you don't want to be just, too intimidating i think to a person. i think I think it's playing chess. Like mm -hmm. you know, I know what yeah. you're looking for. So I'm gonna play this game. Yeah. But as soon as I'm hired, <laughs> uh, the, the joke's yeah. on you. you know yeah. Let's play this game. Uh, exactly. I, I, I play with you, okay? To get yeah. what I need. But once I get what I need, then. Yes. Hello. It, 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 it's back to <laughs> it's it. It's me. Yeah. So you, know, you have it's, to remember, this is the South. You know, we right. can't we can't act like we aren't living in the South. And a lot of things that we we are, we'll always be like. Yeah. 30 years behind everybody. This America, this the South. You know, people talk about fair. You know what fair is? That's a place <laughs> where kids ride around <laughs> and people this judge true. pigs. That's this it. True. Ain't no such thing as fair. I agree. You know. I think one of the, the rudest awakening that a person can come across after they like graduate or get into corporate America is thinking that I'm going to make a difference. I, I want to be a good influence. And then they get in there and they realize that, you know, this is a... A capitalist society. Everything is about money. Everything from the, the education industry, healthcare industry, criminal justice system, all of them are ran around around money. So it's not really about the, the benefit and welfare of people. You know, I've seen horrible things in all three. <laughs> so, right. And I think it trickled down into the relationships too, between man and woman. Like it's all about absolutely what can you do for me versus love and connection. Mm -hmm. So everybody on this energy shit. That's bullshit because if you were, there will be priority to see who you want to connect with. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm just, I'm just agreeing on how what you said trickled down into uh, our personal lives and connecting mm -hmm. with the, with each other. We're trying to get it from the next person. Yeah, I think that even that, like, um, I think the issue with with relationships in the black community is the fact that we don't see value in each other and we won't recognize that and we won't have that conversation. Mm. Um, and so when we get with each other, there's a lot of distrust. Everybody's trying to beat the next person to screw them over because they're so scared. Oh, I'm going to get screwed over. I'm going to get hurt. Right, right. And, you know, we just don't see the value. We do see. You, oh, go ahead. No, do you think to... social media plays a big part in that, yeah, too? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's showing a lot of unrealistic situations <laughs> and circumstances. It it's become so you got what you have intrinsic values and extrinsic values. Um, things like social media, public attention, those are extrinsic values. And what social media has done is made it to where everybody lives for those values and not the other. And that's really harmful to your ego, to your personal life. So now everything is about validation. 
on social media. It's like he could be the greatest guy ever, but if he's not posting a picture of you every day to validate that, then you, oh, he must be hiding something. He's not. He's protecting you. He's protecting y'all's relationship. And, 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 and to piggyback on that, when it comes to my family, I don't post a lot about them mm -hmm. because I try to keep them private. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's a, some significant big event, yeah. I don't post about them because I, I just don't want everything out there. Yeah, you protect them. When you see them. me post, I post about the takeover and stuff like that because that's my brand. That's how I promote and advertise. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm going to be honest. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't even be on social media because mm -hmm. I really don't like social media. It's weird. It's yeah. weird. It's, but I have weird. to be on it because that's my platform. That's what I do. Exactly. So I have to live by the goods and evils of social media. And, I agree. Um, and, and as far as you being an artist, and do you do you really pay close attention to when you post stuff, your likes and your comments and um, stuff like that? I engage, um, but I don't spend a lot of time on anything. But does it make or negative. break you? Say you make a post about your music and it gets like six likes. No, you know because saying? I know people see it. You know, it's just and that's like, the thing. Right. yeah, people see it and. And like I said, it's kind of a tricky game because when it comes to social media, everybody's worried about what everybody else it's can see. It's my manipulation. You know yeah, what I'm saying? and so I post on there to have a good time. Everything I share or post is either a motivational quote or um, something philosophical, something educational, or some, something some funny. I love and the funny I have, videos. And I have posted some of your videos where you talk. You know. Well, I'm just like talking. It's just like yeah, because I believe in because, teaching. Because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. and it makes sense. I said I'm gonna post this. Yeah, because I, I mean, I've seen artists who literally have less than a thousand followers, and yet they, they have paid shows every day of the week. And then I know people who have 30,000 followers. Nothing. But you, you know? know? But you know what happens sometimes? They go to buyfollowers.com yeah. and go ahead and put their yep. PayPal information in there. <laughs> Shit, bam! Yeah, 30, I, think, I think some of that, like, like followers, no doubt, I tell people all the time, I feel like they're like modern day currency. Like, when a label shops you, that's like your credit. You know what I mean? It it's is. like saying that I, I already have a following. Yeah, it is. So it's like a credit. But I think the people have to remember there's different types of currency. You know, you have UK dollars and then you, you got like Caribbean you got, money. You got pesos mm -hmm. and you know, you got one. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can have 30,000 followers yeah. and they not be spenders and they're not going to buy your merchandise and they might not attend your shows. You might have 1,000 solid followers and, and connections and plugs that make sure that you pay every day of the week. And that's that's really all all you need to get your foot in the door and handle business. Um, but people don't really consider that. They put more focus on the followers than yeah. what the followers are generating that's for their just, brand. That's unfortunately, that's our society. It is. Before we wrap up, um, so what's next? What's next for Bison? Um, I'm working on an upcoming release. It will be a surprise release. So um, you might as well everybody else does it, right? It'll be a surprise <laughs> release because I don't really like to work under time constraints. Because I can hear something and redo a whole a whole album. That's just how I am. I'm like, oh, this mix was off or this was off, and I'll redo the whole thing. But I, I'm working on um, a release. I did post a picture this past week of the album cover. Mm -hmm. It's going to be called Resignation. Mm -hmm. So the the EPs that I'm releasing are basically telling a story. So there was graduation or graduated, then resignation, and they're just kind of like, you know, they're going to add on to each other. Um, I'm leaving out tomorrow, going to Vegas to perform at the House of Blues. Hey. Um, while I'm out there, I'm hoping to do a little bit more work on the album because I want to make a, a couple of edits and then um, I'll get ready to head to the East Coast and work on a video because uh, I found a dope videographer out there that I'm really looking forward to working with. So that's pretty much the game plan for the fall. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let me stop. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm do my <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that boss. I know it's it, coming out now. It comes out in me. Closer to midnight, the more right, so, I be. So when, when can you take over TV, get to feature in one of these interviews? I want to be, I want to be, not interview. Goddamn, look, I'm fucking up. On these songs? Like, uh, one of these videos. On the videos? Yeah, we want to be in one. Y'all you know, should be in one. We, we, we ain't kind of sing. We could be like, um, like riding in the car, you know. I could be drinking. We should, we should start the video off, video off with the interview. Mm. Right here, and then and then and then just everything just breaks loose, and then we can head right over to to Larry Flint. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> we idea. We can head right over to Larry Flint. I like that yeah. line. Well, I like you. Hell oh, yeah. Well, I picked the best people to interview. I'm telling you. I see I'm that. Telling you. Yeah, we'll hook it up. Yeah, yeah. 
Take off TV, find them to be in the video. <laughs> See, you greedy ass artists been getting on here not giving us nothing. We finally get in the video thanks to Bizey Owens. Y'all need to be more like her. And her, I smell her hair from here. Them oils are kicking. Oh, Man, Shea, yeah. Shea Butter is a black woman's best friend. I'm Hell telling you. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what I do without Shea Butter and coconut oil. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you can do everything with that. So, like. Bizey, tell us where we can find all your music and give us all your social media handles. Um, my social media handles are Bazi Owens, B A Z I underscore O W E N Z. Has to be a Z. It's not gonna pull Z. up with an S. Don't put that the damn Z, S on. Yeah, the Z is with attitude. You have to remember that. Um, <laughs> so my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook is all Bazi Owens, and then I have a website www.baziowens.com where you can watch my videos. You can see what I'm working on, the latest. Uh, also. Um, there's a website that's tagged onto my website where like I sell clothes and stuff so there's always that merch yeah a little merchandise for you so but yeah everything's yeah. by Z Owens um, comment on my post because I love to troll I love to troll mm. and engage so like hit yeah, me she up does. <laughs> she really hit me does. up but in that hey man y'all make sure y'all go check out her music on iTunes by Z B A Z I Owens with the Z her EP is dope. Go check it out. And if you really feel generous, go ahead and buy it off of iTunes. And if you don't feel like buying, at least stream it. So you know how we do it. It's TakeOver TV. Nice. That was good. Yeah. Push that dude down on Angel Dust though, right? So you know I'm aggressive. Did you see me push that dude down on Angel Dust? Did you watch Angel No, Dust? I did not. Well, you didn't see the part where I went like this? I had a leash on him, and then I yeah, pushed him down. Say, this is Bozzy Owens, and you are tuned in to TakeOver TV. I said the TakeOver, didn't I? You are tuned in to TakeOver TV. Get that TakeOver. TV. TakeOver TV. Okay, I said D, didn't I? Yeah, I said it again. Yeah, that stupid hamburger. Because old girl done took your page, okay. Yeah, sweat hotel. You are tuned in to take over TV. I'm fuck. I keep saying the. I've seen it too much on Instagram. No, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> All right. That's Hold up. Uh huh. Go ahead. Yeah, be, be character. Can I Millie Rock? Yeah. All yeah, be, yeah, be character by All. This is Bozzy Owens, and you are turned shit turned you are in. You're turned on. You're turned on by Takeover TV. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, because that's bloopers real. Yeah. <laughs> this is Bozzy Owens, and you are tuned in to Takeover TV. Yeah, they have no attitude. Almost. Oh, give, give, give me a couple more seconds. Three, two, one, come on now. Sometimes you gotta put it in their face and let them know. Oh, Kiss the belt. Kiss the belt. <laughs> this is Bozzy Owens, you're tuned in to Take Over TV.